These forests, rivers and lochs in the Scottish Highlands have an atmosphere all of their own. They provide food and sanctuary for some of Scotland's most iconic creatures. But for me, there is one species synonymous with these rich wetlands, a bird whose story I've been following for more than 20 years. I remember first coming to this viewpoint and looking out over the forest, the pools, the bog woodland, the mountains beyond. And I can remember just thinking one word. It was so reminiscent of, of Scandinavia. I just kept thinking osprey, osprey. Wouldn't it be great to see my first osprey here? And I had to wait probably three, four years for that. I came back one year and did exactly that. Saw my first osprey hovering above that distant pool. And I can just remember thinking, this is the osprey's home. And so I've always had a, a fascination with ospreys, not just with the bird itself, but with its story. And its story is so, so symbolic, really, symbolic of, of, of how conservation can work and how if we as a species do things a little bit differently, uh, we can accommodate species like ospreys and others amongst us. So it's a bird that's really captured my imagination and I know that it's captured the imagination of thousands of others. But what I really want to do is photograph one. And that's not easy. So it's uh, just before six in the morning, 5.52 to be precise. And it would be nice to think that we're headed off to a nice remote forest lock in to photograph ospreys. But in actual fact, we're going no further than local fish farm. And that might seem a little bit unglamorous from a photography point of view, but from an osprey's perspective, a fish farm is a, a ready-made meal. They're opportunists and for them it's a, it's a motorway service station where they could get a quick fix first thing in the morning. You might imagine that six or seven ospreys coming into a fishery every morning and plundering their stock is going to be a, a problem, but the estate on which this fishery exists have, have turned that problem into an opportunity by creating a number of wildlife watching and wildlife photography hides and charging people like me to, to get up close with the ospreys. So it's a good, a good example of, of rural wildlife tourism in action. This hide has a grass roof so that from an osprey's point of view it just blends in with the landscape and it also has a, an overhang to, to stop the birds seeing any camera movement um, which is all good from an osprey's point of view but from my point of view I can't actually see the birds coming they, they literally come in like a bullet from above so I have a friend acting as an osprey spotter he stood about 300 meters away watching the, the birds above um, and he's going to radio me if there's any activity. Right, so just over the pond now, again still nice and low, um, looking like it's going to circle a few times to see what's on offer today. Okay, I can see it, I can see it. It's directly above us, 20 metres up. A very, very good look at that far side, looking down towards the middle of the pond. Diving, diving. Your beauty, your beauty. I ended up spending many, many mornings in that hide, always looking for that one shot. But as ever with wildlife photography, it remains a work in progress. So this sweaty wooden box is gonna be my home for the next, well, I was gonna say five hours, it could be longer than that. But either way, we're gonna be in here a long time. photographed this bird many times over the years in all manner of weather conditions and he does use the the perch outside of this hide very regularly but of course there are never any guarantees. I do however have the advantage of being able to view the nest in the distance from where I sit. Okay what's he doing what's he doing? Oh he's coming he's coming he's in flight he's coming okay. Oi, 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 oi. There's 
those eyes, those yellow eyes, just burning into you. Sometimes you've got to extract yourself from the photography and just think to yourself, I'm 15 metres away from a wild osprey. I never get tired of watching and photographing ospreys. Their recovery in the last 60 years is as inspiring a story as you'll find anywhere. And their return to the rivers and wetlands of the highlands symbolises what is possible. These birds will fly south to their African wintering grounds in a matter of weeks, so my photography is pretty much done. But next spring, I'll be watching the horizon again for the return of not only a spectacular bird, but its story of hope.